So some of you might say, well, this sounds all great for others, but does it really work? Well, here's a couple testimonials that like changed the game and I saw it firsthand. I had a patient who was struggling with Alzheimer's, stage three, and losing that memory capability at the highest level. And we tapped and tried to find how that brain would time it correctly, no results. And we went through about 13 different speeds and when we found the correct speed, which happened to be about 47, made all the difference in the world. And all of that brain came back, and within three months, they could recall any memory, they could experience everything, working memory was back, every system was working. You just gotta be willing to find your speed and do the exercises. People always ask, how long do you do this for? I personally do it a minute per day, one minute per day. I have done it, for up to three hours on one given day. Why? Because there's no harm in doing more. You can keep activating this brain as many and as much as you want, but consistency is the key. It's better to do a minute a day than three hours in one day and never touch it again. The brain likes consistency. It hardwires with consistency. So what's been so hard is how to narrow down a testimonial that's so precise with the younger kids because the thousands of kids that I've worked on, everyone has a specific speed. And if you can get them to do the TAP app at their speed, their whole school experience changes. Their confidence changes, their reading ability changes, their memory, their task oriented, their focus. Yes, all those kids with ADD, ADHD, what do they have? They have frontal temporal lobe cerebellum in problems. Now, is it specific to the timing? No, but does the timing repair it? Yes. So as we time and practice, time and practice, finding the right speed for a child makes all the difference in the world. I actually had an amazing child that was struggling so far in school. He had a really bad IEP. He was a third grader, couldn't read at his level, and his processing speed was actually 75. So no teacher, or student could talk at the speed at which he processed. So everything seemed slow and mundane and he just never focused. So he started training his brain at that specific speed over and over and over again. And within three weeks, the teacher was like, what just happened? What have you guys been doing? And three months later, they were like, he's one of our best kids, he helps everybody. If you can get the right speed for your child, you change the environment, not only for them, but the teacher and the other students because everyone functions at a different speed and everyone has strengths and we need to help each other. So let's help our kids. There shouldn't be a kid that doesn't find their speed and train at their speed. So when we were looking at this kid with the assessment that you're going to do, you're gonna do your right hand, your left hand, and both hands, right hand or left hand at 50, beats and then the alternating at 60. He couldn't process any of those. He, they were so slow. He was early, late. It was getting scores of 25, 30% accuracy when we need 80 and 90. We sped him up all the way to 75 and that brain was like boop, 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 just rock solid. Bumped it up to 85 and it went back down to 60 because the right speed matters. It's not just the faster you go, the better you get. So what we did was we trained him at 75, and when you train at 75 and the brain wires at that, then it can adjust to any other speed. So what we kept doing is retesting every week what his 50 and 60 results were. And they went from 25, 30s to 60, 70s to 90s. 95 at the 50 and 60, does that mean we change the speed? No! We trained him at his speed that his brain processed at, and it made all the difference for him and all of his family.